This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. We're now one day away from a potential UAW strike. The current contract expires at midnight tomorrow. And now it's being reported that the union is planning a targeted strike at specific plants of all three Detroit automakers if they don't reach an agreement by the deadline. UAW President Sean Fain is planning on doing a live stream on Facebook at 5 p.m. today to update members on the negotiations and its potential strike strategy. It's not known what plants the UAW would go after, but it's a safe bet that it would be the ones that build the automaker's most popular or profitable models. The union's strike fund currently sits at $825 million, which would cover 11 weeks of pay. And it seems like Ford is taking the UAW strike threat to heart. Last week, it fast-tracked nearly 8,000 employees to the top wage rate, which translates to an extra $9,000 a year in salary. And now CEO Jim Farley has told the Detroit Free Press that it made its third contract offer to the union and says, quote, it'll be the most lucrative offer in the 80-year history of the UAW and Ford. While Farley didn't reveal specifics, he said there will be huge wage increases, the end of tiered wages, better health care coverage, better retirement contributions, more time off, 17 paid holidays, and five weeks of vacation. There's no word yet on what the UAW thinks of the offer, but no doubt Fain will have something to say on his live stream today. As we've reported, Europe is concerned about the flood of low-cost EVs from China that have entered the market. And now the European Union is opening an anti-subsidy investigation into Chinese EVs. The president of the European Commission says Chinese automakers are receiving, quote, huge state subsidies that keep prices artificially low. And if the investigation concludes that the subsidies are hurting the EU auto industry, it could impose tariffs on Chinese EVs. A recent UBS study said that BYD will have a 25% long-term cost advantage against its Western competitors in their home markets. Hyundai and Kia are facing another lawsuit in the U.S. over vehicle thefts, which they're asking a judge to dismiss. 17 cities filed the suit due to the wave of thefts that occurred after social media videos showed how to start Hyundai and Kia vehicles without a key because they don't have an engine immobilizer. The automakers say they shouldn't be held responsible and point to policing and prosecution policies and budget decisions in the cities that diverted funds from preventing car thefts. Earlier this year, the company settled a $200 million consumer class action lawsuit over the thefts, and they also face a lawsuit from insurance companies who claim the thefts have cost them $600 million. Hyundai and Kia did release a software update for most of the affected vehicles to help stop the thefts, but people are still not getting that update. At Tejin Automotive Technologies, we combine world-class composite materials expertise with cutting-edge designs. Because frankly, there are better ways to lightweight vehicles. So lighten up with Tejin Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility. The best-selling truck in America just got a facelift. Ford revealed the refreshed 2024 F-150 at an event in Detroit last night. The front-end design is mostly new, with new grills for the different grades, standard LED front lighting, which includes a new interpretation of the C-clamp style that's available on higher trim levels, modular bumpers for Tremor and Raptor, and a new Ford logo. Instead of chrome in the lettering and the ovals around the outside of the logo, it's painted white and there's only one oval on the outside. The logo itself is also flatter rather than domed. This is picked up on the tailgate as well, but not in other areas like the wheel center caps or the horn pad. Ford didn't seem to really want to talk about the new logo. It's not even mentioned in the press release, which leads me to believe there's a bigger story and it will get spread across the lineup. 
but let us know what you think about the new look logo. One of the other big stories with the 2024 F-150 is its clever new tailgate. The available Pro Access tailgate can fold down like any standard tailgate, but it also features a swing open door in the middle. Not quite the full width of the tailgate, the door allows someone to access the bed without having to reach over the tailgate, and it's even meant to operate with a trailer hooked up. To order this as a feature requires a $1,600 bed utility package that also includes bed lighting and an upgraded tie-down system. While the Pro Access tailgate is one of a number of brand new options, Ford is slashing the number of order configurations for the new F-150 by 90%. It's doing things like making the extended range fuel tank and class four trailer hitch standard. And for example, the previous version of the Raptor could be ordered 40 different ways. Now it's slashing that to just six. Ford is also seeing more demand for electrified F-150s. Hybrid sales are up 28% and hybrids now account for 10% of all F-150 sales. So Ford says it's doubling production of hybrid F-150s. And to make the choice even harder on customers, initial pricing of the Power Boost Hybrid on XLT to Platinum Plus trims will match the 3.5 liter EcoBoost. And sticking with engines for the moment, the base 3.3 liter engine is gone. The 2.7 liter EcoBoost is now standard. And Ford wouldn't come out and directly say that the V8 in the Raptor R will have more power, but the V8 in the Raptor R will have more power. But unfortunately, we're going to have to wait to see how much more. But while we're talking about the Raptor, it's available with new graphics, a new paint color, and Fox dual valve shocks. I'd say that pretty much covers most of the highlights with the new F-150, but there are some other new features, and if you'd like to learn more, We'll provide a link to the release. Another automaker is copying Tesla's large castings known as Giga Castings. Reports say that Hyundai is going to make what it calls hyper castings as a way to reduce manufacturing time and costs. Others, like the Geely Group, including Volvo, Toyota, and GM, are going to use large castings. But unlike some of them, Hyundai is going to build its own casting processing and assembly plant which is expected to be pumping out parts by 2026. The battery show kicked off yesterday in Novi, Michigan, and it's all about presenting some of the most exciting technology coming into the whole electrified field. John has been running around the floor of the show looking for the coolest stuff, and you may have seen a couple of his videos pop up yesterday. But this is just the start. You'll definitely see more today, and probably tomorrow too. So check that out if you want. But that brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for tuning in. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone. Solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems. Over-the-air engineering. Boost your game. Scheffler. We pioneer motion. And by Tajin Automotive Technologies. The formula for better mobility. We want to know what drives your testing, OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing. Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. At Scheffler, we pioneer motion. Electrifying mobility. Manufacturing smarter. Reducing CO2 emissions. Making energy production clean. Scheffler pioneers motion to advance how the world moves. <laughs>